Hey guys, everyone, I have good news. Joe got his pizza. Guys, yeah, you live in the Texas Houston area. I highly recommend you go to Star Pizza. 10 out of 10 pizza. So good. It, it's just great. Joe, you're going to be doxxed. Everyone's going to know where you are now. All of your enemies I, are going to dox you. I hope you. so. If it's for this pizza, I hope so. Hey, everyone. Anyways, Bradley, you, if, you you started one piece finally. No, hold on. If, yeah, that's Oh true. my god. If you live in if you if you made it to this point of the episode and you got past Joe's pizza bullshit, here's a fun fact. We all live in Texas. So there you go. You got to learn a thing. <laughs> Everyone's like, "Ew." <laughs> you mean the best state? It's, it's fuck, true. It's fuck state. a state tax. You know what I'm saying? Yee mm-hmm. yee. Okay. So, Bradley did start one piece. Let's talk about it. Uh, yeah, I got to chapter 100, which is where they're finally like, hey, we're going to the Grand Line. Um, so yeah, the story started. <laughs> uh, so it, it, to kind of clarify uh, what we're going over this week, um, this will probably be a shorter One Piece discussion, discussion uh, than we normally do. That'd be good. I say that uh, even though we usually tend to wring out <laughs> everything we possibly can from one piece which is just packed with good moments uh so we'll see uh but yeah to clarify uh this is the kind of reverse mountain slash whale slash laboon arc i say whale slash laboon laboon is the whale if that's how you guys say it laboon laboon Laboon. um which i (laughs) really liked from like for most of it i was like oh you know it's kind of a standard uh standard arc but the way it finished off i thought was just phenomenal um, so we should probably go chronologically and Let's. not start with the best stuff. Or right. so, uh, at the end of our last arc, they finally are like, okay, we're going to the Grand Line. It's, it's uh, it's happening. Uh, so they take off, and the first kind of obstacle they see is, um, Reverse Mountain, which kind of serves as an entrance to the Grand Line. Um, and there's a pretty good explanation for this with the calm belts, which kind of because they're so calm, they can be so full of these just like sea monsters that even even for our crew, even for the Straw Hats, they're like, no, we're not going to fight these things. Plus no like, wind. I, I think wind doesn't blow as much there, right? Yeah, and yeah, they're a tail ship, no so there, right? they wouldn't be able to make it across the calm belt probably anyway. Um, so yeah, the reverse mountain kind of serves as this entryway to the grand line which i want to talk about how like geographically i love how the grand line is going to service as a story element perfect because it's not just this if it was just this big open sea kind of deal i feel like we'd have to rely on like pure luck that our crew would run into progressively stronger opponents on pure based on pure chance the grand line like funnels us into this path we're going to go to progressively from this entrance that you pretty much have to enter and it makes sense that if the majority of pe- if the majority of people are coming from this entrance this entrance rather um the further along you go the stronger people you're going to find i i just think that the geography Oda made here serves a story so well. And, and man, Oda's such a genius because he knew this was going to be a problem. Yep. And like, and it provides a very easy progressive like visualization of where they are in terms of like their progress on the Grand Line. Um, it, it's pretty great. The world of One Piece is built such that it's maximizing adventure. Like everything in this world. Is structured to give us the best adventure story ever and remember when i said that the power levels in one piece are geographical where the fur that this is yeah that's exactly what we were saying the further you get into this grand line the more the bigger and bigger threats become and yeah. it totally makes sense it's a really good way to structure your story so that there's a power creep but then yeah. also explains why this power creep isn't ruining the rest of the world because all the big shots are at the end of the grand line doing their shit there yeah like as soon as i because like we've heard a little bit about the grand line up to this point but the fact that we have an entrance that virtually everybody has to go through and they showed us like the islands uh like i don't know like 
I was like, this is fucking genius. Like, this is how you have that, like, power creep over time and have it make sense in the world. It's, it is genius. Just like, wait. Holy shit. Just wait until you get the explanation as to why they can't just straight sail to the end because it's that's the actual genius part. Uh, yeah, like I, at at this point, I'm just like I know whatever Oda do. Like I trust him. I trust Oda. Like whatever he does, I'm sure I'm gonna love it. <laughs> he's in that trust. <laughs> he's from soft of. He is from. He's uh, the from manga. soft of manga. To to like we'll touch on pirate creep for a little bit. I think One Piece has like <clears throat> some of the how do i say this like like enemies that we encounter become more and more powerful but oda is a really good way of still providing us this tension that you know how are they going to beat this opponent kind of deal um whereas like i feel like there are some like more traditional battle mangas like oh they're gonna beat it yeah sure but like the arc willer and i are in right now i have no idea how it's gonna there's come just out. there's just no fucking way the, the the series probably ends this arc <laughs> <laughs> like it's just because like it, it like and it, we and it's not like a dragon ball like island one has frieza and island two has cell where cell is 50 times stronger than frieza it's it's really nice and gradual and it takes a while until it's mm. like oh shit like they're having act they're having trouble beating these people and like they're the story yeah. has to revolve around it. Be, it get, it's really interesting how it unfolds, mm -hmm. especially when you get to like that right before the time skip part. That that's like a big kind of like oh fuck moment. Yeah. I feel. Um, but, yeah. And like that's where we're at right now in our like current read through. Like I, I'm like Willard, just being honest. Like I don't I don't know how what they could possibly do at this moment to to win. Oda, it, it's some shits going. I have some theories. Well, we'll talk about it. But Bradley. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, like, Joe's talking about the battles, and I think Oda has a just a fundamentally good understanding of what the priority is in a battle. Yeah. Um, I think in general, as a writer, and I don't know, maybe people have different priorities, but I think your goal shouldn't be like, oh, are they, are our good guys going to win? Like, it should be it doesn't matter whether they win or lose really it's just at what cost are they going to win or lose or how are the characters going to grow as a result of a lot fight? of the time it's actually a, a why why are they fighting yeah and why does it matter and the reason's always great <laughs> and like so much of one piece's fights already you know just like you said the why we get to that fight and, and the how, I guess. Yeah. And the how, like, holy shit. Like, Oda really knows what he's doing. <laughs> and this is where I feel like a lot of other um, shonen that would have been out at the same time as where I currently am, uh, I think that's where a lot of them fail. They just, they, they just like, oh, well, look how strong this guy is. It's pretty scary, huh? And I think One Piece has the priority on the characters. Now, speaking of fights, this arc has none of them, really. Yeah, and it was still great. Yeah, <laughs> it, it just goes sure. to show you don't need fights all the time. It, it uh, starts introducing um, these setup arcs, these uh, exposition arcs. It's uh, Yeah, they're exposition arcs, and they're just as good, if not better, than the more action-heavy arcs. Yeah. Um, so, I guess if we want to get kind of into the play-by-play -play of events... Um, the crew is like, okay, time to go to the Grand Line. Um, I think we established that they have to go through this entrance at Reverse Mountain, um, which uh, it'll only last a chapter or two, uh, but there's some really good moments in here. Um, one of them that really stuck out to me was as they're approaching the entrance to Reverse Mountain where the currents kind of converge, um, their whip staff breaks and they're very close to just totally crashing and honestly all dying. Um, and Luffy zero hesitation throws himself between the boat and what they're about to crash into without knowing if that'll one even work or two, if he'll be able to get back onto the boat and not drown, uh, like zero hesitation to sacrifice himself for his crew um unfortunately you know he's able to be saved 
Um, Zoro is able to grab Luffy's hand that he slung up into the air. Um, and you could also make the case that that's just Luffy having enough faith that someone will be there to catch him after he does this saving throw. Like, there's quite a few levels where that, like, one or two panels, I think, says a lot about these characters. It could all, it could also just be, like, he didn't really think about it. He's just like, I, I could probably help the situation, and he just does it. And even if the, it's the case that he didn't really think about it, that's still awesome for Luffy's character that, like, he, like, it's not even a thought, like, oh, should I do this? like potentially deadly thing he's just like oh yeah i'm gonna do it like come on i can do it so i should yeah, yeah very luffy um so that was really good and then they go up reverse mountain and then coming down the other side um we start getting a series of events um where i think everyone except luffy has an event like this where up till now whenever there's been discussion or thoughts of the grand line um, everyone kind of has this really like uh, like dreamy thought of the future. Like, oh yeah, we're all going to the Grand Line together. It's going to be awesome. We're going to achieve our dreams. Like there were some talks that were almost <laughs> word for word like that. Um, and in the, these, the next one or two chapters as they're coming down the other side of Reverse Mountain, each one of them kind of has one of these moments where they're like, holy shit we're in the grand line this is terrifying like nami almost gets totally destroyed by a piece of their ship that flies off and it zooms in on her face and she you can just see it in her eyes and she says oh my like oh my god am i dead and um every, like everyone else throughout this arc kind of has a moment where they come really close to death and they're like holy shit we're here and we've committed and we can't really leave. We're in the grand line. Um, and I think it's a really good contrast to show like, okay, like they are like, we are, we are here. Now. Like this is where like the stakes, there are stakes now is the thing. <laughs> like, I don't there's, know how to describe it. There's the chapter. I think you, you got to it, right? Where like a chapter where everything goes wrong in a span of a chapter yeah, something like that. Yeah, that, pretty much. That's one of my favorite. Where like all sorts of like natural phenomena are happening, and like they're trying to get their shit together. Yeah, you know, there's like not a later. single moment where they aren't trying to steer themselves out of danger. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wait that that already happened, right, Joe? You got your stuff. No, I, the the moment when they when they encounter all of the like natural like weather pattern stuff that happens after this arc. Because okay. They, well, never mind. Well, even said, even this arc was kind of like like yeah. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> um. So yeah, I just felt like that was really. I, th I think it was really good to get that contrast of um, you know, before the Grand Line was like, we're gonna go achieve our dreams, and now it's like, holy shit, we're in the Grand Line. This is dangerous. We need to be serious. <laughs> like, um, time to uh, walk the walk. Yeah. Um. So they come down Reverse Mountain, and we see a whale. And I did. I had no initial idea that this was going to be like my new favorite character in the entire story. Well, goddamn! <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! Oda made me love this whale so much. It's like, it's like Hachiko, but more tragic. <laughs> and kinda, yeah. Oh my god! So, um, first of all, I just want to say, like every setting that Oda comes up with is so cool. There's this guy living on an island inside of a whale like so any weird. fishes in the stomach acid ocean inside the whale jesus <laughs> it's so cool and he built like metal plates around like the stomach lining too oh man so yeah and we kind of our crew kind of gets separated here you know everyone else gets swallowed up by the whale luffy's on the outside and he kind of has to figure something out um and we get interested in, or interested. Well, we do get interested, but we also get introduced to Mr. Nine and Miss Wednesday. These kind of, uh, I guess the best word to describe them would be agents. Yes. <laughs> uh, they're and they're, they're just really fun, the way they talk and everything. They are, it's like they're in a spy thriller. They're in a spy thriller where no one's taking them seriously, and it's pretty fun to watch. Yeah, I love them very much. They're 
they feel like a better Jesse and James kind of. Oh, that's so accurate. <laughs> uh, I got some things to say about Miss Wednesday, but we'll wait until later. We'll wait. Because yeah. uh, we're not done with them. Uh, so everyone is kind of going on. We have like two or three concurrent threads going on. Um, and Oda manages to make that not feel busy. So congrats to him. Um, so everyone's kind of moving into their positions through the story. Um, most of the Straw Hats meet the man living inside Laboon. Crocus. Um, yes, and they get a little bit of the story, not the full story. Um, our agents meet up with Luffy, um, and kind of through Laboon's movements, they all end up in Laboon's stomach in the same place. Um, and so what I really like is that, uh, what was the man's name again? Crocus. Crocus. So he explained a little bit of his story to the rest of the Straw Hats. Um, but Luffy has not heard any of this. Um, as soon as Mr. Nine and uh, Miss Wednesday get into the stomach, they're like, oh, hey, we're here. This is where we wanted to be. Time to kill the whale. So they pretty much immediately try to shoot the stomach lining. And Crocus puts himself in the way and takes the hit for a laboon. Um, and so Luffy doesn't know anything about any of these people. He doesn't know, you know, he doesn't know what the agents want. He doesn't know what Crocus is. He doesn't know if Crocus is actually the bad guy. He doesn't know if the agents are the bad guy. Without any of the backstory, he's only seen these people for a few seconds in his entire life. Crocus taking the hit is all Luffy needs to know that I'm on this guy's side. Like, he's only known these people for a few seconds after he sees Crocus take take the hit he just knocks the other two out cold he's like no th no these guys are not the people that i want to be on a team with and that's just one of those things where luffy comes off as he can come off as like really aloof and goofy because he is but he just has such a good fundamental understanding of people that comes out at the best times it's it's his best trait i think God, it is so good. And I'm going to talk about that quality of Luffy's more uh, later in the arc because it really shines with how he handles Laboon. Um, so I guess if we're kind of moving on from there, like I, I really wanted to get to that point because I was like, God, I love that Luffy moment so much. Um, we get a lot of good Luffy moments in this arc. Um, uh, I'm also flipping through as I, as I go through this. So they are able to kind of make it outside and they get the full story of Laboon, which is, holy shit, so tragic. Um, also, Mr. Nine and Miss One today are in captivity. Um, and we hear about Laboon's old crew um, who entered the Grand Line with him. Um, it's dangerous. They can't necessarily bring him along. So they wanted Crocus to look out for him and they promised Laboon that they would circumnavigate the globe one day. Um and come back to him, which obviously is a hard promise to keep because no one had ever made it all the way around the Grand Line before except for, I guess, Roger, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, Joe? I don't know if he... Did he make it all the way around or did he just make it further than anyone else? Is Joe alive? I don't I know. Muted. No, he's dead. My, my, my mic... I, I, I muted my microphone and then unmuted but then muted it again. Joe, um, this isn't a work meeting. Get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> um, Roger definitely made it all the way around. Yeah, he okay. made it around. I don't. Um, I don't think you needed to make it around to get to One Piece, as you and I yeah. both know from further information. Willer. Yes, yeah. but I. Th I guess no. He he must have. He he for sure has had. I don't know if he's the only one, but like, I don't think. I I I wouldn't say finding One Piece. Piece and making it completely around the Grand Line is like essentially Synonymous? the same goal. I, yeah. I don't know. It's as far close. as anyways, know, as, as far as Crocus knows, Roger's the only one to make it to a certain point. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Basically, <laughs> the moment Laboon's crew promised they would circle the Grand Line and come back, um, that was probably a pretty sad thing for anyone who knows what they're getting into which crocus did which crocus did and he had been watching laboon for 50 years 
and at a certain point even like after crocus told laboon this like hey they're not coming back laboon on a daily basis maybe even hourly basis will like painfully ram his head into the red line and just wail and scream for his friends to come back and holy shit it is like also, like also man, the idea like, that this whale is trying to destroy the only continent in one piece in order to see his friends God. jesus like nami's one piece nami's one piece nami's backstory was so sad but so good and this is the other one where i'm like it's so sad but it's so good <laughs> um oh. and luffy having the emotional mastermind that he has just such good emotional <laughs> emotional maturity. mastermind he's an emotional mastermind no one's ever said those two words together uh. no he just immediately knows it, it like this reminds me of when he found nami's map room at arlong park and he like, just immediately knew to destroy it yeah he immediately knew like oh my god i have to destroy it this is another moment where he heard laboon's story and then like without missing a beat he's he tries to beat the shit out of Laboon, and he's like, hey, we tied. We have to have a tiebreaker, right? And he's like, I'm going to circle the globe. I'm going to come back. We're going to fight. And, you know, that could have been a really tough call to make because, you know, what if Laboon's like, oh, I'm going to be hurt again? But no, Luffy was right. This is what Laboon needed. He now has someone new to look forward to. Another hope. And, you that's know, so beautiful. that's beautiful. Just... Yeah. If Luffy didn't already have enough motivation to make it to the end of the Grand Line and, you know, eventually make it back here, now he has even more motivation. He's like, I have a promise to keep. And knowing Luffy, despite this, uh, like, huge journey and saga over multiple years he's going to go on, there's no way he's going to forget a promise that he I, made someone like this. I can definitely say that that promise is still in Luffy's heart, like... His, his journey is way bigger than Laboon, but that promise is, is still there. Yeah, like, Lu like yeah. Luffy's not the kind of person to forget even a tiny promise. And this is a big promise, so um, way to go, Luffy. I'll Bradley, like remind me, why did Crocus stay with Laboon again? I, I remember that reasoning being pretty sweet. So he initially had just decided to um, watch Laboon because Laboon's crew made it past reverse mountain and there there was a village there at the base of the mountain mm -hmm. um and they kind of wanted to stay there for a year or two just to kind of prepare before really entering the grand line and crocus made really good friends with um the entire crew uh and they decided they just could not they just did not want to risk laboon getting hurt so like crocus you're a good friend can you watch laboon for us he's like of course laboon's my friend too um and he's like, it's going to take a few years to circle the Grand Line if they are able to do it. So 50 um, years later, he was pretty patient. And I think after a decade or two is when he finally was like, Laboon, they're not coming back. And he's like, Laboon and I have been friends so long that he's like, I'm not going to just I'm not going to abandon him. Like he's he's like my best friend. Dude, God, that's so Crocus good. <laughs> Jesus. So oh, Crocus is super old. Yeah, yeah, just Joe, holy shit. Joe, we need to talk in a second. But, and uh, even uh, then, going back to Luffy's promise, I just remembered another reason it's good is because, like, it's one thing for Luffy to make this promise, but even then, that might not necessarily stop Laboon from ramming his head into the mountain and wailing, right? So Luffy paints the Straw Hat logo on Laboon's face and is like, hey this is a symbol of our promise and you can't ram the mountain or else it'll erase it and you'll forget the promise. Mastermind. Uh, Luffy, <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> oh my God. That's so good. It is so good. Bradley, you got anything else on reverse mountain? Um, oh, the rest so of the... There, there's a few things in here that they, they talk about that I don't, they didn't discuss. Let's hear it. Um, uh well for one they set up the rules for the grand line okay they did that because that's super important it's in this volume yeah yeah oh i was gonna i still have a few chapters left in the volume so i don't know oh, okay. they did talk about the um i was about to say they talked about the oh what is it called log, the log log pose log pose and it's very interesting 
So yeah, um, okay. So we did. So that's the reason why they can't just sail straight to the end of the Grand yeah. Line, because you have to. It's it's so genius. You have to stay in each location. It turns the entire Grand Line into a tournament arc. Yeah, like you have to you have to get to an island and then like recalibrate your log pose to get to the next one. And this means yeah. depending where you start and which direction you go, there's multiple branches that you can go. So people can be moving laterally to each other and not run into each other. Yeah. Which and is man. super important for later. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's the entire story. So. Well, yeah, but like you meet people later that that you realize have very that have mirroring adventures um and become very important to the story and then even then oda being oda <laughs> despite that chapter explaining that being almost entirely exposition for him he can even turn just pure exposition into character moments because once they learn about all these different paths and once you pick one you're kind of stuck to it almost mm -hmm. um they're like what if the path we pick turns out to not be a very good one and Luffy just very matter-of-factly says, then we'll just have to circle all the way around and pick a different one next time. <laughs> like, that is exactly what Luffy would say. <laughs> oh, oh, Straw Hat. Move this you arc, are. Like, I, like, Luffy has a good moment in pretty much every arc so far, but I feel like this arc was just chock full of them, like, in a very short time span. Did you, did you get the name drop at the end of the chapter by Crocus? That happened the now? Yeah, that happens at the end. What the fuck? Yeah. Okay, that this is worth talking about. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, there's a lot of people with names. You should so. read the, the very last panel of chapter 105. Yeah, where he's like, um, that boy has a strange air about him, huh, Roger? Yeah. So, like, you, you, this is, like, the first person you meet that you know has, like, that, that hints at having some sort of direct connection. God damn it. I got it confused with another thing. With Bull Roger. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Not that person. That's no. in Drum. You're right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's in Drum. That's in Drum Island. Yeah, no. It made sense to me that this guy would have met Gold Roger at some point. Yeah. No. But Gold Roger's probably met a ton of people because he's fucking Gold Roger. <laughs> Joe, was it confirmed? Like, I, ha I have a theory. Was this confirmed or is this in my head? I think you should know what I'm saying with our t telepathy. About Crocus and Roger. They used to be uh, lovers, I know. God damn it, Bradley. How, who spoiled you? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> okay, I I think I think Crocus was Roger's doctor. Is that Yes. Okay. That would, he was that that's that, that definitely gets explained. That oh makes sense because Crocus was a doctor and he's in the grand line. Well, so I mean he was he was a doctor for a time and that gets and that hints more that that gets more in detail in the white beard section i might be wrong i mean we'll see no no, no it is because it rails another character introduces talks more about Jesus. roger later joe you really know how to butcher some names <laughs> i know i do <laughs> but i'm anyways. sure we will find out all about this when i get there yeah one, one day you, you might have already seen this character I think. Yes, he has. But yeah, whatever. You've, you've already seen this character. You don't even know it. Okay, well, I'll know it when I get there. You one, will. One Piece is God tier, but you know yeah. this. Okay, uh, any other notes you want to talk about, Bradley? Oh, uh, yeah, well, it kind of ends on that. Hey, Roger. Uh, <laughs> so, no, yeah. I, uh, God, I really enjoyed this arc. Uh, for most of it, uh, I was like, oh, that's like a three out of five. But, I, God, just the way Luffy handled his... Um, <laughs> interaction with laboon i bumped it up to a four out of five which is pretty good mind you i Gave think me the point I so think, uh, yeah joe got the guessing point i think God. you've improved my thoughts on the only part of this arc that's like middling is like the hijinks with mr nine and, and miss wednesday but yeah man that that ending is such good writing yeah, yeah like it just goes to show even like a small a smaller arc that most people might pass over i'm just like holy shit well, we're what we're 29 minutes in, so we're still shorter than average, but you, Bradley's the god at analyzation. Well, that, that's the thing is, you know, going into this, I was like, oh, it's a pretty it's a pretty short arc. There's not a lot to talk about, but I'm like, there really is. Like, anything Oda writes, you can wring so much out of it because it's all there. What did you, you think of Crocs' flower head? Um, I think, I think he's a fun character design. Character, like, 
<laughs> One Piece character designs his, are really his, goofy. His mustache that's on his chin. Yeah, like his, the character designs in One Piece feel really goofy, but they don't feel wrong um, to me i was like oh yeah he, he has flowers on his oh, head you're but... gonna meet some wrong motherfuckers <laughs> yeah like, i don't know i just have flower petals on his head and i was just like oh yeah of course he does i yeah. can't wait so next art is whiskey whiskey peak is whiskey. whiskey i was gonna yeah. say another thing but i would spoil what whiskey peak is no uh, no uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get there soon yeah no well yeah uh whiskey peak's a fun kind of another arc that's i like think this. whiskey peak is a lot of fun actually yeah I, I really whiskey peak is also like fun to watch because there's a lot of cool sequences in it's there. It's a it's a feel good arc. I feel like that'll be that might be the one where we get under twenty five minutes, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. But then uh, after we'll that, see, yeah, we'll just, see. Watch it be the best the arc one, in One Piece. I think the the arc after I guess I think the two arcs after Whiskey Peak, like Bradley is just gonna love. Jesus. I feel like I'm gonna like every arc in this story. You, so. you are. But... <laughs> I can't wait till Bradley loves Long Ring Long Land, and then I can rub it in Joe's face. <laughs> no, you mean Tyler's face. I was okay with it. It's just it's like whatever. You, you nearly dropped One Piece, but whatever. Let's. No, I did. That was Tyler. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> Tyler anyway. gave it a one. Yeah, I don't anticipate disliking any arcs in this story. So. All that matters is that you love the right ones, and we can remain yeah. friends. The right ones, which is all of the ones. All that well, matters is that you get to Alabasta. Yeah, like, that's all that matters. Okay, there's like, One Piece. If someone was reading One Piece, I'd be like, all that matters is you get to our long part. Because I feel like if you get there, there's no way you're not going to finish. Yeah, there's a friend that like uh, started watching One Piece. And I was like, you, you, have, you have to do the due diligence. It's only like 40 episodes in or like 30. Which isn't it, too Which crazy. is a lot, but like... Like for a shonen anime, that's if someone watches shonen anime, that's a pretty low number, I guess. And by that point, at least you got to see Luffy headbutt the shit out of Kuro, so there, there's fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 